So, we're back again. And, uh, it's good to be back. It's good to, uh, do a show again. I didn't get to do a show yesterday, because I was worn out <laughs> from yesterday, because, you know, everything was kind of crazy. And let's get the intro going, shall we? to be back. Many crazy things has happened today. So, I forgot to open up my laptop. <laughs> and, uh, let's see. I will be doing a book review tomorrow for everybody. Everybody should know. Uh, the book I'm reviewing tomorrow will be Confessions of a Cape Crusader. Never heard of it. So. And good news, my neighbors are fighting again. So, I had to close the window. I'm happy that they're alive. They were kind of quiet for a while. So. Um, I have never read Confessions of a Cape Crusader. It looks pretty interesting comic. I I never read a comic book like it. Hi. <laughs> My producer is here on the show. One of the big news today is Tom Welling is going to reprise his role on Crisis of Infinite Crisis on Infinite Earths, which I'm excited. Happy to see him come back. I kind of hope they bring back some of the cast from Smallville, and yeah, you know, I'm happy for that. So. And, let's see. Have you ever, like, lived in a neighborhood where you're wondering, like, why do you have neighbors? I'm kind of like one of those people. Uh, let's see. ACLU requests to enter legal battle between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Didn't even know they were having legal battle <laughs> so uh, let's see one of the questions I have yeah I did hear about Rotten Tomatoes and Joker rating it kind of makes you like question 
everything that happens with Rotten Tomatoes nowadays because you kind of look at it and you're like what is really the honest rating and what is the not so honest rating um, I kind of look at it that way I just I sort of look at it like this is kind of dumb um, thank you one rumor that is I've been hearing from my source at DC and WB is the suicide plot suicide squad plot with involving Martian Manhunter has been one of those rumors that you sort of you look at it and you take it with a grain of salt but at the same time you can't help but be excited about it because you know when you look at it like I I was so disappointed the way they treated Martian Manhunter and Supergirl. I just sort of like, what is the point of this character being here? And the weird thing about it is, like, he's supposed to be this older character, but they don't give him any wisdom or knowledge. And instead, it's like, he's got to be saved by Supergirl. Mm hmm. And it's like, you, you sit there and you're like, this is so fucking stupid. Like, completely stupid. It's like, Martian Manhunter is supposed to be this in, highly intelligent character, but he's dumbed down and Supergirl, in my opinion. Like, you look at him in Smallville, he had so much knowledge to teach Clark Kent how to be you know in the world you know how to be involved in the world be a part of the world instead it's you know instead they you know treat him like a sidekick and Supergirl. I just always found that problem. Um, one big news right here is former Lu Louisiana attorney Louisiana Attorney General Charles Fote is launches an investigation into accounting fraud allegations against Disney. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Disney's been kind of a shady business for a while. And you look at it, it's like like former like <clears throat> Disney accountant claims that the company has infiltrated revenue of billions inflated revenue, sorry. Inflated revenue of by billions. But if you look at it like Disney's been on a crazy ass spending spree. And one thing that bugged the fuck out of me, still to this day, is how people are like, Disney, Disney's going to get Spider-Man back. They are going to get Spider-Man back. Sony is going to fail. And they're just going to be like, here, take, take the character back. The thing is, business don't work that way. It'd be like me, for example... Me and my producer of the show, my significant other, run a business, separate businesses. And I have like, we're both creative people. We we're working on a comic book. And I take, some, take half of the characters that we created together and launch my own brand of character, you know, comics. And she has her own side of the brand. Her own brand. And it becomes successful. Mine becomes flat. <laughs> and we work together for a short while. Then we go, you know, split off again. 
separate, separate entities. And all of a sudden, like, buying tanks, and I'd be like, you know, give the character back. Give the characters back to her. It, it would be, be kind of stupid on my part, because it's like, one, these are money-making characters. And how would I, as a creative person, be like, give the characters back? It'd be kind of stupid. It'd be like, I'm giving money away. You know. Sony isn't going to be like that. Spider-Man is a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar movie franchise. It'd be stupid. They're basically giving away money. And this is why I always believe Disney wanted Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man is money. The name value alone brings attention. The character design brings attention. You look at the entire MCU movie lineup of Phase 4, tell me if there's one film you look at and be like, I want to see that. There isn't, in my opinion. There isn't. There's no Captain America. There's no Iron Man. I mean, I mean, yeah, there's rumors of Robert Downey Jr. returning to play in Black Widow. But, let's be honest. The only reason they're doing that is because Black Widow is not that interesting. She's not. She's not an interesting character. I mean, I'd be honest with you, I really don't care where Spider-Man goes. Because the Spider-Man films really don't speak to me anymore. Like, I don't look at him and be like, it's speaking to me, I want to see that. I just look at it like, oh, another John Hughes story-esque superhero where it focuses more on the teenage craziness and zaniness instead of the heroic story of a character evolving. Here's the thing. Peter Parker is supposed to be an evolving character. When you look at Far From Home, has Peter Parker really evolved as a character? I'll give you an example. You look at Spider-Man 1. Peter Parker is you know, finally getting out of high school. He's trying to find his place in the world of where do I uh, where do I belong? Sorry. Where do I belong as a person, as an individual? And he gets bit by a radioactive spider. And he realizes changing. Times are changing. He has to change with it. And he gets these powers and he's like you know, with these powers, I could be, you know, a wrestler and make money and buy a car, get Mary Jane's attention. And his uncle gives him the speech, great power comes great responsibility. There's none of that in the new Spider-Man films, by the way. Just saying. And he gets $100, if I remember correctly. After beating Macho Man Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah. A little excitement. <laughs> Snap it to a Slim Jim. Sorry. Every, every time I see that, I always think of that commercial. Because Macho Man's the best. God rest his soul. By the way, i seen a documentary, by the way. The Vice documentary about him and Miss Elizabeth. It was a very sad and emotional documentary. Because... The one thing that bugged the fuck out of me with that one. I'll, I'll talk about that later. Anyway. Um, Peter Parker witnesses a robbery. He doesn't intervene. He lets the robber go. And as a result of that, his uncle gets shot. And he hunts down the guy who 